So do you want something more than a situation ship? Well, I'm going to offer you do this instead of chasing him. So um, we're going to talk about what a situation ship is in a moment. Um, I do want to address something first, and that is I've witnessed a significant percentage of women who seem to be afraid to ask a man about how she he feels about her, how he feels about her. And so why I'm bringing this up is because when two human beings get together in a romantic context, when there is uncertainty about each other's feelings towards one another, what ends up happening is this thing called a situationship. Now, a situationship or a casual relationship, and I want to differentiate between the two, a situationship is typically a, an engagement into getting to know another human being, but there isn't any definity of what's actually going on here. There might be going out to dinners, there might be spending time at home, there might be physical intimacy with one another without any clear understanding of what the label is of what we're doing. OK. Now, you might say to me, Jonathan, I'm with a man who says, I don't like labels. Well, folks, everything comes with a label. This is called a book. OK, that's a label. This is called a pen. That's a label. This is my eyeglass cleaner. That has a label. So when someone says, I don't like labels, what that means is I don't want to define the relationship with you. And that's why it's called a situation ship. Now, if you're not familiar with the work of Esther Perel, okay, I'm going to grab her book. She wrote an amazing book called Mating in Captivity, Mating in Captivity. And by the way, all the links of the books I recommend are listed below. Why I'm bringing this up is she coined the term for relationships that are a little bit more than situationships. And what I'm going to talk about is casual relationships. And this is where there's an agreement of monogamy and an agreement of exclusivity. And the, the way I've interpreted the way she calls it is she calls that stable ambiguity, sta stable ambiguity. What's stable is there's an agreement to monogamy, there's an agreement to exclusivity, but it's ambiguous as to the direction of the relationship. There is, there is ambiguity to the direction of the relationship. I believe the reason why this happens is that a significant percentage of men have a short-term mating strategy versus a long-term mating strategy. Now, short-term mating strategy is, let me spend time with this person, uh, let me have sex with this person, and if I have a good time and the sex is good, you know, then I'll pursue this, so long as everything remains good, okay? So long as everything remains good. Because the minute it is no longer good, no it's no longer serves its, its it's kind of like these particular men want relationship on their terms, on at their beck and call. But you might be going, well, Jonathan, all the female energy dating coaches tell me to sit back in my feminine energy and let a man lead. Well, you see, when you do that, you are basically setting him up to have the relationship on his terms. Whereas a man that has a long-term mating strategy, he's actually viewing you from the potential of compatibility, which encompasses shared values, lifestyles that are blendable with one another, and more importantly, emotional maturity. Does this woman and or the man, because it goes both ways, have a capacity to regulate their emotions when there are differences and do active listening, active acknowledging, active communication with one another. Emotional maturity includes having your actions match your word consistently. Emotional maturity is being in victor consciousness instead of victim consciousness. And sadly, here in the United States, we are suckling on the nipple of victim consciousness. And emotional maturity means you know how to you know, when you have differences, you know how to listen to your partner's point of view, acknowledge your partner's point of view, and even accept their point of view as being true for them. That's emotional maturity. Emotional maturity means you have empathy. And not just empathy for them, 
for them, the other person, but empathy for yourself and emotional maturity means that if something is material to relationship, you're going to talk about it as soon as it's possible to talk about it. You're going to be transparent with one another because emotional maturity in the context of a, a, a serious relationship is all about building trust, building trust with one another. So I have a radical idea. This isn't that radical. I brought it up before, but I want to lean into this conversation. You know, Dating is, is, you know, off, okay, so I want you to think of two sovereign beings. You're a being and they're a being, okay? Two sovereign beings coming together, okay? Now, most, we have this traditional expectation that men are the leaders of the dating process. Men are the provider protectors. They're the ones who plan dates and pay dates, okay? So I want you to think about that. And because my hand here is above this hand, it's a one up, one down type of environment. I'm here to encourage something a little different, two sovereign beings coming together. And let me give you an analogy to illustrate this. I want you to think of two attorneys, could be two men, could be two women, could be a man and woman, doesn't matter, okay? Two attorneys, we'll call it a man and a woman in this particular case, who decide that they want to start a law firm together, okay? The way they approach this process is as two sovereign beings. And what they do is they ask about what are you what do you want to accomplish in this law firm in this partnership, okay? What do you bring to the table and what do I bring to the table? Now they also find out their past experience. Do they have any do they have any contracts with people out there? Do they have any debts with people out there? They find out a lot about their past experience. And then they then they sign a contract together to form this partnership. Okay, well, how does this apply to dating and relationships? And I want to share a book with you in a moment because this kind of illustrates this. So what if we date from that perspective? We find out as much about their past as we can possibly find out, okay, to make sure that there isn't any residue from that past that will affect this relationship. Now, residue could be a past relationship that somebody is still hung up on. It could be, you know, financial uh, concerns. It could be um, maybe even in their professional capacity, there might be some residue from that past that could affect anything in the future. And you do your due diligence. I call this, um, I call this um, radical honesty, laying your cards on the table, and I call it the rules of engagement. So what radical honesty is, is being upfront right from the get-go and having serious radical conversations. Laying your cards on the table includes talking about your past experiences and how that might have some effect on any future experience. And by the way, it doesn't mean just your past relationships. As I said before, it could be any facet of your life, okay? And the rules of engagement, basically kind of like that partnership agreement that those two attorneys had, they have this partnership, they have a written agreement. Well, the rules of engagement could include my dating vows, if you're not familiar with my dating vows. And what that means is that we you, and by the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my dating vows. It establishes the context of how we're going to explore this relationship together. But Jonathan, that's going to turn off a lot of guys. Well, yeah, because most men have a short-term mating strategy. See, those of you that are so afraid to speak up is because you're counting on the guy to choose you instead of you standing up for your sovereignty before you ever have physical intimacy with somebody. And the rules of engagement basically outlines the type of relationship you seek. So this is one of the things I want you to do instead, instead of chasing his affections and hoping he chooses you by just merely showing up, I want you to establish your standards right from the get-go and only choose men who are in agreement with your standards. Now, I want to talk with you about another radical concept here. So 
it used to be an olden time. So up until about 50, 100 plus years ago and before, it used to be people knew each other for literally a short period of time and they got married so they could have sex. I mean, back in the 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, I mean, people dated for a few days or weeks and got married. You know, I have a friend of mine whose parents got married after 12 days of knowing each other. Now, obviously, today, that would be insanity, and certainly women don't need to get married from financial purposes or whatnot. But I'm here to say if two people have had conscious conversations with one another, they've agreed they're going to explore a relationship together, they've agreed to be physically intimate with one another, I'm going to offer a suggestion going forward, and that would be that you each agree to spend two weeks in each other's homes, respectfully in each other's homes, day in, day out for two weeks. You do it once at two weeks in his home. He does two weeks at your home just to see how you get along with one another. Now, this is a radical concept, but let me tell you where this was birthed from. I watched this TV show called called. I watch, I've watched this TV show called Love is Blind, okay? Um, and in it, you spend this time getting to know someone without physically seeing them. And when you physically meet them, uh, the next day you're whisked off to a, a week honeymoon with this person where you spend seven days together. And then you spend eight weeks with the person living with them in a, in a home that's provided by the studio. Okay. And you get to see who this person really is. Well, it's fascinating that basically I would say, you know, seven or eight out of 10 of the couples never make it past the eight weeks. Okay. They never eventually get married. And a few do. In fact, the lead, latest season, it was shocking how many did. But wouldn't you rather, let me ask you all a question. Would you rather invest eight weeks of intense getting to know someone to see if there's potential versus what our current dating environment is situationships or casual relationships? I actually think dating is just a long strung out version of friends with benefits and people will spend years without ever really getting to know someone. They're just spending time together. I call these people spenders. They are in situationships or casual relationships. Now, I know this is a radical idea, okay? And it's you might say, well, this isn't practical. Jonathan, we live too far away to do this or our, our work environment. But think about this for a second. If two people live far from one another and their work environment makes it difficult for them to get to know each other on a day-in, day-out basis, then what's going to make this relationship ever work in the future? Like, I want you to almost think downstream and apply it to today. In other words, if, if your lifestyles are, are kind of mismeshed, you know, women, you all are living in this fantasy. Women particularly live in a fantasy. Well, if we love each other, we'll figure it out. Look at there is some there is no doubt that love is a juicy delicious experience there's no doubt about it that's what makes relationships worth making the effort love doesn't make a relationship work because if that's the case why did millions upon millions upon millions of people get married and not work out they loved each other well they fell out of love well they fell out of love a lot of times because they were a mismatch to begin with and they jumped in either too soon, like those couples we talked about in the beginning, or they let it strung out and then it failed. So I'm here to offer a radical way of looking at things to dive in to see if you actually really get along with this person. It, but here's the thing, ladies in particular, if you're willing to give your body you know, with another human being, then why aren't you willing to go and do some radical stuff different? Because our current dating environment is not working the way it is. It's just not. And so, um, you know, this is why I offer an alternate perspective. I'm not saying this as an absolute, but let's face it, to get to know another human being, you need to see them in a variety of different experiences. Our current dating methodology, like I said, it's a long drawn out version of friends with benefits. It's really a long drawn, most couples aren't integrating 
each most humans are not integrating into each other's lives that's why they're called situationships that's why they're casual serious relationships integrate each other into their lives. They spend time with the grandkids. They spend time with the children. They spend time at the work uh, functions. They spend time going grocery shopping with each other. They do the, see, here's, oh, I'm, I hope you got this far. It's in the mundane things that they do together that real commitment is built it is through the mundane things that real commitment is built. It is not through the superficial things. I recently wrote in a blog that romance should be reserved for people that are in relationship, not as an entry point into relationship. You see, we have it backwards here. We here believe that chemistry equals relationship success, and that's the furthest thing from the truth. Chemistry is important. We need it. And romance is important too, but not as an entry point into a relationship. That should be reserved for couples that are already in a relationship because then it makes the relationship sweeter to be in rather as an entry point because you've all heard of love bombing. You all heard of coming on strong. You've all heard about lust and limerence. See, being an emotional grown-up means trying something different. And if you need some support with that, schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. I just got a call from a client. She's in a, she's in a brand new relationship. And she said to me, and I quote, Jonathan, for the first time in my life, I can tell the difference because I'm operating on brand new software. I'm not operating from software that is so old and outdated because everything she learned prior to our conversation was wrong. Everything she learned about relationships is wrong. So try something different. That's my invitation for you. Be radically honest, lay your cards on the table. Do that instead of chasing somebody's affections because the reality is, is you're not going to be happy at the end of the day if you can't be with someone where you can speak from the heart, speak from that heart-centered space instead of that, for lack of a better word, desperate place. And when you find yourself with somebody who's not willing to meet you there, you know what you say? Just like Ariana, Ariana Grande said in her song, thank you next. Thank you next. And with that note, I'm going to wrap up. Hey, first, if you have something to say, post a comment below. I'd like to hear all your thoughts. This video was shot for my group called Midlife Love Mastery. If you'd like to have direct access to me on a regular basis, go to my website, jonathanasley.com. There's a link below. Hit that group coaching button so you can join my fantastic group and uh, you can have direct access to me on a regular basis. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera. Please excuse those pit stains and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give either of them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.